And this is our home. We've lived here since we were married. We're homebound, my husband and I. But last week, while we were out, department got there fast and they put the fire out in a hurry but how will I ever clean up this mess This is my town, too. And this is my warehouse. My customers are dozens of local merchants for whom I store merchandise. They depend on me to have stock ready when needed. And I did. Until...
What a mess. What a mess. But they put the fire out, didn't they? And they even put the sprinklers back in the What could they have done differently? Well, as someone once said, I don't know any poor firemen. I only know some who are better than others. For example, here's another town. Here's another home. Here's another fire. And here is another fire. smoke. These men are careful to throw water directly at the fire and not have to where the fire might be behind the smoke. Notice too, they use water carefully. Too much water won't extinguish the fire any faster, but it will cause unnecessary damage. With the fire in the room almost out, the officer checks the closet, and with good reason. fire department has been trained not only to extinguish a fire, but also to protect property. As soon as men can be spared, salvage is started. There's smoke and fumes. Heat in the wall calls for it to be open. They spread a cover to keep the fire from falling into the water and causing a mess that's hard to clean up. Again, enough water to extinguish the fire. Not more than enough. As the fire is brought under control, more men are doing the salvage work. Below the burned bedroom, they roll up the rug, and in its place, unfold a salvage cover. Furniture, too big for removal, is placed on the cover, well away from the wall. The men are work before water can soak through the ceiling. Place the rolled up rug on top of the furniture to support a second cover. The two covers prevent water from reaching the furniture from either above or below. is out, partly burned and water-soaked articles, such as bedclothes, rugs, or garments, are removed. They remove anything that might still contain fire, but in such a way as not to damage. They recognize that fire and try to do what they can to minimize their hardships and their losses. This mattress, for example, is not too badly, but there still might be fire in it. This is a way of finding out without ruining it. What distinguishes a fireman from the good one is his ability to put himself in the victim's place. He knows it could happen to him.
few salvage operations pay bigger dividends, both in goodwill and preservation of property, than Furniture that's been dried is not apt to warp and crack. Getting the water off the floor may avoid a badly warped floor. have been well trained in modern firefighting. To them, salvage is second only in saving lives and actually putting the fire out. Important as salvage is in home fire, it can be even more vital in a business, such as this clothing store. It's in the same town. It's served by the same fire department. In a second floor office, because it was Sunday morning, the discovery of this fire was delayed. that this could be a mean one, and it was. The first step was to find the fire. Water damage was held on by looking spray streams instead of solid streams. However, no time was lost in starting cover work downstairs. But where does that power come from to do salvage work? True, early in a fire, practically needed to gain entrance, ladder the building, ventilate, and stretch and man hose lines. But it is possible that while all this is being done, some men can be spared to spread covers and undertake other salvage It's difficult to say just when salvage begins. Is it when the fire is to make sure the fire is out, or when they cover merchandise and fixtures, or can't we say salvage begins and never take steps to protect property from first damage? For example, one of the most important phases of salvage work is the removal of water from the building. Here, a hole is cut on the floor for the water to drain into the moments ago was placed in the store below. In this manner, the water runs in the damaging store or merchandise. The hole must be cut in the lowest part of the floor. Floor levels may vary. A hole cut at the floor's high level would not let all the water drain off into the chute. While the ground floor is being protected, the hall continues upstairs. The men show consideration, even for scraps of paper. Business records, although charred, might still be useful. Yes, salvage is a state of mind, a state of mind which causes officers and men to recognize the many things that should be done to protect during and after a fire. There are many rules of salvage, but all of them have one goal. The lot of the fire victim. Just look at the difference. To this family, fire was a major misfortune. The room was left littered and water soaked. On the other hand, these people are like you. And their fire was a bigger one. Good salvage work kept the damage small. They could move back in here very soon. This woman won't soon forget the thought of the man who put her personal articles in the dresser drawer. The fire department has won two enthusiastic backers. Thanks to good salvage work, the downstairs was undamaged. Unfortunately, 
that two business fires were handled also. With this one, this merchant's business could go on as usual, in spite of the loss of the upstairs office, because good salvage work protected the floor below. Yes, salvage makes the difference between good community protection and the best. Today, many fire departments consider salvage just as vital a part of their operations as saving lives and putting out fires. And these departments take pride in the fact that they are giving complete protection. 